Hi, I'm MJ Hecox here at Leopold, where we like to pair our bottles with books. For this month's food and wine pairing, we've selected a wine from a tiny little winery in central Italy that specializes in indigenous grapes. We selected this wine because it's an orange wine. Pickled and fermented foods can be quite difficult to pair with wine. However, orange wine is a white wine that's been left on the skins for some period of time. This lends itself to an, a richer texture and unique notes of earthiness, sometimes savory notes, as well as orange rather than lemon citrus. So it can be a complementary but also complex pairing with pickled and fermented foods. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Cooking with the Cap Times. <laughs> it is not officially, but it's officially winter. It's snowing out there. Feels official. Feels yes, official. Absolutely. <laughs> We're cozied up here at Kessenix. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Lindsay Christians in a sec um, to get started with Chef Mary Kassman of the Driftless Cafe in Viroqua. I just want to thank our sponsors, Quick, who helped make this video series possible. First, we have Kessenix, our official kitchen sponsor. That's where we are this evening. You can come in here to Kessenix and shop like a chef because they are open to the public. We'll put their website in the chat for you at home um, so you can go and explore what they're all about. And then we also want to thank our official wine pairing sponsor Leopold's Books Bar Cafe located on Regent Street. Our in-person yes. guests tonight are enjoying the wine that you guys watched at home, um, that little intro video from Leopold's. <laughs> They're enjoying that wine here tonight. They chose it to pair with the dish. And you can go to Leopold's and purchase that bottle. But for you lucky viewers at home, we're also going to give away one of those bottles. Ooh, so whoever nice. asks the most intriguing question, yeah. <laughs> that's the question <laughs> winning. <laughs> so Whoever asked the best question um, throughout tonight's event, we will pick a winner at the end and you can swing by Leopold's and pick up your complimentary bottle of wine. Um, and I also want to give a plug for Cap Times membership. If you go to uh, membership.captimes.com. You can give any amount to support our newsroom and our journalists, um, like Lindsay, our editor, and um, <laughs> help support local journalism. And if you become a Cap Times member, member, make sure you mention Cooking with the Cap Times and you want to contribute to help make sure this video series um, continues on a regular basis every month. Um, the members, our end of year membership drive starts uh, November 28th. Chris Murphy, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> in the chat. We are hoping to raise $35,000 between November 28th and the end of the year. So we appreciate you so much. Our current Cap Times members um, are joining us in person tonight. So it's another perk of becoming a member. You get a chance um, to come and enjoy the dish at a Cooking with the Cap Times and some wine. I've talked enough, we can all agree. I'm gonna pass it off <laughs> to Lindsay and Mary. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. thank you so much, Chelsea. Thank you, Mary, for being oh, here. Oh, thank you for having me, this is great. Yeah, I'm really I'm really glad that you are here. I'm glad that you're doing something Thanksgiving-y. Yes, yes, I'm Thanksgiving gonna... is my favorite holiday. So. Is it really? Yes, it's the only holiday that um, I feel like you can really just do exactly what you want, which is <sighs> eat good food, be with the people you love, and just kind of relax for the day, you know? Yeah. I'm all about that. I used to get really <laughs> excited as soon as like the, the cooking magazines with like the Thanksgiving theme yeah. would drop, I would just like <laughs> spread them all out on the floor <laughs> and be like, yes, we're in it it's again. And time. I save them all every year. And I'm like, oh, Bon Appetit is doing this different thing this year. Yep, like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so first of all, introduce yourself maybe a sure, little bit and yeah. tell us about Driftless Cafe. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm Mary Kassman. <laughs> um, I am the executive chef at the Driftless Cafe in Viroqua, Wisconsin. Uh, we are located between Madison and La Crosse area in the Driftless region, um, which is a beautiful part of the world, um, not just the state, but of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the luxury at having our dis at having at our disposal um, the second highest concentration of organic farmers by county in the nation. Um, so we get an amazing amount of produce uh, and just artisan products uh, from the food, uh, sorry, from, <laughs> from the creators in our community, the makers and all of that, cheese makers, and yeah. just the list goes on and on. Um, so what we do at the cafe is our menu changes daily. 
depending on what we have available to us from the farmers. Um, so something on that menu is changing. It might not be a huge change every day, but something is always changing. So it's a breathing, living entity. Um, and uh, it's a great way for all of us to stay on our toes, you know, and try new recipes, take risks if we want to, um, but also just promote like our, this beautiful part of the state and get people to come in and see what our farmers are doing. And, our soil's pretty good over there, so come <laughs> check out what we're doing, yeah. <laughs> you know? I was scanning through the menu and I was looking at just, like, you're doing a lot of wonderful things, I think, with like the meats and the cheeses mm -hmm. of the area, but also like we're in this era, this time of the year right now where yes. it's a lot of like, what I think of as like, vegetable candy. Yes, <laughs> so yeah, like yeah. So squashes are sweet, sweet potatoes are sweet. Right, There's so much yeah. sweet stuff, yeah. which is kind of lovely. And and so I, I wonder, like, when you're putting together some of those dishes like that are very seasonal, mm -hmm. um, are you coming back to certain techniques or certain preps that you're like, you know what, we love this last fall, we're gonna bring it back in a little bit of a different way? Yeah, we definitely will come back to things for sure. Like, you know, I try to keep like a running journal or something of like things that worked out really well, oh, things yeah. that didn't work out really well. Um, a lot of the times it's usually just uh, different flavor takes on it. Like I, um, I have a chef de cuisine who loves Asian flavors, so like maybe ah. we will we'll take a different approach to something, you know. Um, I myself am really uh, well versed in Middle Eastern, Eastern Mediterranean, so uh, sometimes we will do that. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, it is an interesting thing to try to keep squash exciting. Because um, <laughs> uh, you kind of get that to that point in the season where you start seeing on the availability list for the farms, like, oh, the squash is here. Oh, I'm just going to wait just a couple more weeks before I start bringing this in. But um, for me, it's just like I take things that I like to eat and I'm like, how, you know, how can I incorporate this in, into that? You know, so for example, I did uh, a squash, a spaghetti squash pancake a couple oh. weeks ago, you know, so, but it was a savory pancake, right? So I was able to utilize the squash and uh, have that sweetness, but also, you know, add some cheese in there and some warming spices and make it approachable in that sense, as opposed to just having like, oh, spaghetti squash that's cooked like spaghetti and served like that, you know, so, which is kind of, you get, we fall into that rut, uh, you know, so, um, and then with like sweet potatoes, um, Yes, you can definitely go the sweet route with that, but I really like to take it savory. Ah. Um, there is a Turkish dish called kumpir, which is like a, a twice-baked potato, basically. It's a street food. Mm. Uh, and then they just put all these beautiful toppings on there. Um, and so I like to do that with sweet potatoes. So roast those sweet potatoes, scoop out that delicious flesh, and uh, you know mix it with yogurt and cheese, and then top it with all of the good things, like herbs or... Um, mushrooms or chickpeas, any of these things, honestly, you could do. <laughs> and then you have, you know, kind of a meal in itself. And so, yeah, I just try to think about what spices can I use? What, you know, how can I make this exciting? How can I incorporate other seasonal ingredients that would go with it? Yeah. Textures, all of that, so. So I think a lot of people are probably planning for their Thanksgiving yes. meals this coming week. Um, do you have a favorite side dish or a side dish that you're really excited to make? I mean, yes, oh turkey, goodness. et cetera. But like, oh, I wasn't prepared I'm, I'm for very question. into the sides. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, this year, so we normally, a couple of years ago, we started smoking our turkey because Ooh. it was just so easy. We like put it in the That's brine, <laughs> take it out, dry it for a day, and then put it in the smoker, forget it. We didn't have to baste it or anything like that. So a lot of the times, like my sides kind of become like barbecue-y sort of <laughs> themed, but um, I'm a huge sucker for stuffing. I love stuffing or dressing, yes. you know. I guess te te technically it's a dressing because we were cooking it outside of the turkey, but um, I like to do like a pancetta and chestnuts and stuff like that. Um, but I do have somebody coming to my Thanksgiving next week who doesn't eat pork. So I'm gonna try to think of a, a fun substitution for that. So probably mushrooms, but yeah, I'm, I'm like more of the stuffing person. Nice, <laughs> nice. all right, same. I'm, yeah. I'm very into stuffing. And I know that there's like, some people say you should never have a salad on yeah. your Thanksgiving table, but I lo like I love something with fennel or kale yeah, or something like that. I think like you that. need yeah, something, something green. Crunchy. You need something crunchy and you need something green and kind of just like cleanse your system is all of that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> all of that That's butter and everything's true. going in there. Looking at Lauren, she's like, I don't need any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you have, have to have salad. salad. Beauty yeah. heart radishes and kale and po actually pomegranate seeds oh, in pomegranate salad. Seeds, yes. Uh, lovely for a Thanksgiving situation for so sure. They're so beautiful. Yes, absolutely. They do they kind of look like a murder when you like 
Yes, <laughs> there there are ways to go about it that are that uh, make it less so. But yes, it's a tricky one. Less like murder. <laughs> yes. Um, well, tell us a little bit about this dish and why okay. you chose this. Um, so. I chose this dish because I recently um, went to a restaurant in Door County that served hummus as an entree, and I was like, oh, what? Do you I remember the do restaurant? This. Yes, it was Trixie's. Trixie's, yes, nice. Which my is, friend Kyle just went there and was oh, raving about yes, it. Yes, and it's it's one of my favorite cozy places, uh, actually, like in the state. Um, just it's a they do some beautiful uh, food there. But it was a hummus dish and it had chicken confit on it and like tons and tons of fresh herbs and crunchies and all these things. And I was just like, wow, this is really awesome. Like I never thought about like approaching this as an entree. Um, and I was like, well, this would be a really wonderful idea in the restaurant to do this with mushrooms or sunchokes or, you know, as the like middle of this the beautiful hummus. So um, and then when you approached me about yeah. doing a Thanksgiving, uh, Dish, I was like, well, this would be a really great option as a side dish um, or as a appetizer, or if you had a vegan guest, this could be an entree, you know, in itself. Um, so that's kind of my, where my inspiration came for that. I love that, like, we have some of these ingredients that feel very autumnal, they feel very much like fall, but I never probably would have thought of hummus <laughs> Thanksgiving, <laughs> which is really cool. So um, let's get started. Yeah, let's, sure. Where do you want to start? Um, so, what we're going to do, so I have to say that a lot. Um, Hummus. Uh, I I feel very passionate about hummus, <laughs> and I'm gonna in that like I think that it's very easy to have bad hummus so or to easy. buy bad hummus, and I just want to say that it is so easy to make it at home for yourself if you want to, um, and it's uh, it's quick. Uh, you just have to have the right ingredients. Like I recently uh, watched that um, Chef's Table pizza episode. Uh, with Chris Bianco, he's saying, "What you know? If you put good in, good's going to come out." And I really do feel that that is uh, something that applies here. So um, the best uh, way to start, I think, with hummus, and I take a lot of uh, Mike uh, Sal Salamanov from Zahav Restaurant. Um, he kind of really revolutionized the five-minute hummus uh, game. <laughs> so, uh, which is amazing because I think that. Uh, it was definitely needed. So I'm gonna take a, a couple tips from him for sure, but uh, I also wanna say I am using canned chickpeas here. Um, just because it's faster, I'm, I'm a mom, I've got two small kids, so like anything that can help me kind of get stuff done quickly um, is a bonus for me, but you can absolutely cook your own chickpeas especially um, if you have an instant pot I would say oh. uh, that is a great way to cook any kind of bean honestly um, I think it makes beans a lot more approachable for busy people so anyways anyway, I am using canned chickpeas but if you do cook them at home just make sure they're almost overcooked because you really want to break down those beans um, I don't have anyone's ever had like a, a chunky like grainy hummus it's just no fun so <laughs> I've made chunky grainy yeah, hummus it's just, it's just, like, it's just not, not on purpose <laughs> yeah it's just not a, it's just not a fun experience so um, and so we're gonna start with tahini uh, and I could evangelize about that for a while too but um, you want to go again if you're gonna put good in good is Going to come out. So uh, you want to find a quality tahini that you can, you know, that's affordable. Um, I like to use this Sum brand. I'm holding it upside down so that all of it comes out of the jar. But uh, which is a really wonderful uh, company. It's women-owned, and they um, produce this in Israel. And the seeds are coming from Ethiopia, and these are toasted sesame seeds. So it's going to give it a little bit more of a roasted flavor uh, in the tahini. Um, but it's not going to be bitter, hopefully. That's what you're going for. Some tahinis, you're gonna open up that jar and you're not gonna know how long it's been sitting on the shelf and it's gonna maybe have a layer of oil on the top of it and it's gonna taste acrid and it's just not gonna be a pleasant experience. So looking for something that is, uh, you know, relatively fresh is good. Uh, so I brought the sum to show that as something that I really like to use. Or if you're gonna go like, uh, if you're in a Middle Eastern grocery store, um, when you want an unroasted tahini uh, the, or sesame seed, this is a Lebanese brand of tahini that I really like to use as well. Uh, and you're gonna see when this comes out that it's, it's really well emulsified and it's not gonna have that layer of oil on the top. Um, so we're gonna start with good quality tahini. We're gonna use a food processor and I will say the food processor is very, very important for this. <laughs> it would be really hard to do this with, with you know. So I... I is, is the layer of oil, is that like a bad it's not a it's not a bad sign necessarily um, 
if it if you shake it and it comes back together pretty easily, then it's 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 fine. Um, it's kind of more if it's like, well, this has been sitting there for for a while. You, you kind of. I've to had avoid tahini it. in my fridge for too long, and that's also what happens. Yes. Uh, it just gets really like hard to re-emulsify. Yeah. Um, yes. I've also, I've also gotten tahini when I was visiting my parents. I got tahini at Kroger in oh. Ohio. Don't recommend <laughs> doing that. Um, <laughs> but but it's the same kind of thing that will happen where it's just like this is this is not emulsified anymore. Right. It has kind of an off flavor. There's a brand called East Wind that I got at the co-op oh, that was nice. actually pretty good. Yes, that's a good. One. And this one, the Lebanese brand yeah. that you have, yeah. I found online pretty yeah. easily. I think they have Amazon. Either, yeah, Amazon yeah. Foods. Like yeah. And if you have, I mean, there are a couple um, Middle Eastern groceries in Madison, and uh, that you know they're going through this pretty quickly, so they're getting restocked on it so you know it's it's coming in pretty fresh so I don't know if the camera can zoom in on this but like this came out pretty much all together well emulsified I'm not having to scrape like crazy to get to the bottom of it which is a good sign that we're we're in the right direction here we can like pull it up for them oh yes absolutely this is also available on Amazon and I do believe that they are selling Sum in Whole Foods now I'm not like don't quote me on that but I feel like I remember hearing that they some of locations are selling the Sum um, so there's that. So we're gonna start with our tahini in the bowl and then I'm gonna add um, some garlic. If you're using your food processor, you just, you just need to kind of chop up the garlic a little bit. You don't need to necessarily go crazy because that blade is gonna do a lot of the work for you. Just like um, chunk it up? Yeah, little that? chunks. Just kind of like take your knife and just little slices. I also added my um, cumin and a little bit of allspice just to kind of get that um, Thanksgiving flare in there. Um, if you want to add a little pinch of cinnamon or nutmeg or something, if you're really going crazy, definitely feel free to do that. Um, I am just going to kind of keep it pretty pretty classic in that regard. If you wanted to add cinnamon or, or nutmeg or something else, yeah. could you do that at the end if you're like, you know what, I really want a little... Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You would just keep keep the blender going or the Roboku going for a little while. If you're just like not sure. You're not, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like not want um, to commit. And right I think there might be an error on the recipe that says three quarter cup of lemon juice you really only need a quarter cup so but unless you oh. really want it lemony which is fine so I'm, I'm gonna add my lemon juice here uh, so I have the garlic I've got the tahini uh, spices lemon juice um, and, I th and I'm gonna add some salt now uh, again kosher salt ideal for for something like this um, actually for any sort of cooking kosher salt is is definitely the way to go do you use diamond crystal or Morton I'm a diamond crystal girl. Same. Mm -hmm. Same. Because it was really hard to get for a it's while. It's really hard to get. Thank you, yes. Um, so, <laughs> again, um, be pretty, li you know, liberal with the seasoning here because you, this is, you know, you want the garlic to come out, you want that lemon juice to come out, and salt is going to help with that process. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start this. Just kind of incorporating all of those ingredients together. It sounds very wet. Yes, it is very wet. <laughs> um, and it, it kind of is starting to look like broken peanut butter. Uh, a little bit in here. Or like, yeah, just really thick kind of peanut butter. So um, we're just going to let that garlic break down a little bit more. And then we're going to add some cold water. And this is the trick that uh, uh, Mike Salabanov taught me, which is this really helps kind of make the tahini almost like rest out in the sense that it gets like super, super creamy. It also is gonna change its color. It's gonna turn like white. Um, so it's just really, really interesting, but it really just kind of like takes the tahini just a little bit further where you want it to go. Uh, just a little bit of cold water. So I just have ice in there for the cold. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna open this just so we can see where we're at here. So yeah, you can see there are still some chunks of garlic in there, which is totally fine. Um, this thing is gonna run for a while once I add those chickpeas. It's kind of, that's the, you just get it really, really nice and smooth, so I'm not super, super worried about that. So I'm gonna start adding my water in here. This is about a cup and a half of really cold water. Note that she's making a larger recipe than the one that you have. At, home. at least I think so, right? Um, I'm staying pretty, I think so. I oh. think that was what I said. Maybe? <laughs> it's bigger, okay. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so we're gonna do this stop a couple of times. So now it's almost starting to look like pie dough, like it's mm -hmm. gathering around that blade. It does, um, yeah. So we're, it's kind of halfway to its goal. But then it's gonna start, once I keep adding this water, it's gonna start turning a lighter color. It's gonna almost start looking like hummus without the chickpeas. And there's no chickpeas in it yet. No it's almost like frosting. Yeah, almost like frosting. I'm just about there. Just gonna add a little bit more. Now the trick with hummus is that like I feel like it's either tastes too like beany, like there's like just be like pureed beans, or um, <clears throat> there's not enough fat in it, or it just doesn't have that creamy aspect to it, and that's kind of why the tahini is so important. So this might seem like a lot of tahini, but um, it's really what makes hummus hummus, in my opinion. Unless you're making hot buttered hummus, which is which is a subject for another day. <laughs> we can do that one next time. Hot buttered hummus, oh my god. <laughs> All right, so uh, that is looking pretty good. Um, so at this point, I am going to add my chickpeas. So we're looking for a light color. A it's light still... color. It's very pale. Um, it's uh, it's still gonna have that thickness. It's gonna be almost like a I don't know watered down peanut butter sort of situation. But <laughs> I can't think of like the best thing to describe what that looks like. But it's uh, it's pale in color. It, I, I mean, it really does just look like it's hummus at this point. So we're gonna add our chickpeas. If you are cooking fresh chickpeas, um, having them be a little bit warm is nice for sure, but it's not absolutely oh. necessary. But um, the canned chickpeas are perfect for this recipe, though, because they're nice and soft. They don't look like they have skin. Do they have skin on them? Yeah, they do. And some people do like to remove Death the skins. Man, a Smitten Kitchen. It's yeah. like very big. I'm like, and you take all the skins yeah, off. I, and I, I, I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> Like, just sit in front of a television and like do it. I was like, I, I just have, yeah. Um, Prince Michael also is, really? is, is a proponent of that. Yeah. Uh, so I am literally just gonna let this roll for a while. Um, I'm gonna add just a teeny bit of, I think it's, the recipe, I think it says like a tea, tablespoon of olive oil maybe. I think, I think, I'm just gonna, I don't wanna add a ton of olive oil because it will get bitter if you add too much olive oil. It will definitely. I do have one question. Yes. Um, you said it a little while ago, but Eric once um, was wondering why is kosher salt better? Oh, <laughs> uh, it sticks to the food, honestly, much better uh, than like your table salt, and you don't need to use as much of it to get the flavor because the flakes are bigger. So um, you, if you're using like regular iodized salt, it might take you a long time to actually get that level of flavor that you want, whereas with kosher salt, a little, you know, will go a long way. But it's, for me, it's really like, I think it just sticks to food, especially proteins, cooking meat, um, or vegetables. I never knew that. I've been using kosher salt for years, and I never knew that. It's an amazing thing once you go from the table salt to the kosher salt, you're like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> also with like, when you're frying something too, um, like at the restaurant we, you know, if we do french fries or any other fried thing, like when it comes right out of the fryer and that heat, you get the kosher salt sticks really well to it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I have literally, I will admit, um, done this till the roboku is hot to the touch. So uh, just to get it as smooth as possible. Um, and then one quick question, yes. Morris, um, just wants to clarify, are we talking two and I'll, I will post the recipe again in the chat, um, but are we talking two 15 and a half ounce can of yes. chickpeas? Yes, okay. yep, absolutely. So that would be the one jar of uh, the tahini, which is, this is two cups, uh, 16 ounces, um, and then... And it's a quarter cup lemon, yep. not three quarter yeah. cup. I don't know what the recipe says, I am not looking at it right now, <laughs> but if it says three quarter cup, Someone please fix it. Um, <laughs> you know what, it's probably, you know, it'll just be really le nice and lemony. I mean, very lemony, um, yeah. Yes, um, okay, so while this is going, is this okay if we keep going yeah. with this on? All right, while this is going, we're gonna do our mushrooms, which I probably should have started with first now in retrospect, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so, confit mushrooms. Uh, you could definitely saute these too. I just think it's kind of fun to uh, try something a little bit different. Uh, it's gonna impart a little bit more flavor. Uh, so confit means to cook in oil. 
so most people probably know duck confit, uh, where you cook your, the duck legs in oil in like a kind of a sl slow and low for a while, and then it becomes this miraculous thing. Um, so this is about three cups of, I'm using some fresh uh, cremini mushrooms that I found at uh, my local co-op in Viroqua. Um, but you can use any kind of mushroom you like, oyster mushroom, shiitake mushroom. And I'm going to add about a cup of olive oil. So yeah, it is, it's quite a bit of oil. Um, but the nice thing about this is that you can reserve that oil for something else. So you have like your own little like mushroom infused oil for dipping bread in or something like that. And you're not gonna need to like completely submerge these because as those mushrooms cook and release a little bit of water, like you're gonna have all that nice liquid to work with. So <clears throat> that's what that's looking like. And I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. I always ask about when you add salt with mushrooms. Cause I feel like some people will tell you like don't add salt right at the very beginning. And yeah. I, I've never quite understood like well, what for this one, I'm kind of trying to flavor the oil, too. Okay. So um, that's partially why I'm adding. I'm also trying to get some of that moisture out so that, like, you know, if you wanted to crisp them up even further in the oven, which we can do, um, you could do that. It just keeps them really succulent, I think. Succulent. Okay, we have um, a good question yes. and, and a lovely comment. I'm excited okay. to read this. <laughs> um, Sean asked, how do you get meat and potato mindseted people that don't stray too far from salt, pepper, and ketchup as their main spices? Okay. To, uh, uh, yeah, who, everyone in my family probably. To slowly <laughs> transition to expand their palates to enjoy meals like you showing us tonight. And then, hi, this is your brother-in-law, Sean. Very <laughs> proud of you and love the Driftless area too. Oh Yay! my goodness. Okay, hi, Sean. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Um, honestly, I think the easiest thing is to start uh, by putting different, uh, start with foods that are approachable to you. And uh, like, let's say you have a meat and potatoes, um, you have a steak or you have a pot roast. Put a different spice blend on there instead of salt and pepper. Like maybe try. I'm gonna do a plug for the deliciouser because I just went there I love today. That. <laughs> um, uh, try that bomba spice with Ooh. the Calabrian chilies on there, or maybe the deer uh, camp spice. Uh, you know, th those are the easiest ways to do that. Honestly, I think another really good thing to try is like with your breakfast, like sprinkling on your some fruit or in some oatmeal sort of expanding in that sense is a really good way to do that. Um, to be clear, I was saying my family doesn't use the spices, <laughs> not Sean's family. <laughs> I know that Sean's family sometimes uses the spices. <laughs> <laughs> so um, did that answer, is that a good answer, Sean? I guess I should ask. <laughs> um, yeah, we've had uh, the delicious sir um, yeah. on here. Patrick, Patrick. O'Halloran was on here. Right. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. And I anything. now I have the, a bunch of their spices. Yes. I love the Sienna. I love the day boat. The day boat is kind of like an old bay sort of Ooh, spice. Nice. Um, I, I'm obsessed with the Zocalo, which is like chili and lime. Yes, and, yes. Oh, it's okay. so good. I'm putting a little. It's so good. I, I use it on like carrots or I'll rim stuff with it, but then like if I sprinkle it on something that I'm roasting, I'll like yeah. be just right. grabbing the spice right out of the pan. Um, <laughs> it's okay. so good. All right, so oh, I yeah, got we my in-house question. Oh yes, yes, yes of course. Guys on the spot, are you actually massaging the mushroom? I'm just mixing that oil in there. Yep, mixing getting that, that oil salt in there. in there. I mean. Yep, I'm gonna. Um, good to know. There are whole cloves of garlic in there. Uh, yeah. uh, these are just. Um, you can use like whole. These were gigantic cloves of garlic, so right. I just cut them to the size of regular garlic. Yes. <laughs> Little handful. Um, it's really awesome that you can buy pre-peeled pre -peeled garlic now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> makes things um, a lot easier. I didn't easier. know that you could do that. Yes. You can. Yes. What? Yeah. I started writing when I'm writing recipes or editing recipes. I now include my measurements for like a clove of garlic or one teaspoon because yeah. like my bestie Joanna, she buys like minced garlic, and so she wants the teaspoon. Sure. To, yeah, those measurements too. So I write it both ways. All right. That's smart. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Um, so those are going in the oven. We're gonna let, let them kind of hang out for about 30 minutes or so, 25 minutes. This is a fancy oven, so they might be done before them. <laughs> you also got it to not like make the robot noises at us, Whoa. which most months. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> Chef uh, Sean did say, thank you, great answer. My family uses Lutheran glue, which is a cream of mushroom soup, <laughs> LOL. 
Coca-Cola. Like what? Lutheran glue? Lutheran glue. All right. A lot of it. He's calling it Lutheran glue? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, you can so many casseroles. You can confit north. your mushrooms and then puree them. John, where are you have, from? We need to know. He's, he's where from Holman. Okay. Big <laughs> house kind of here. Sitting down with small aerobics. Um, Johnson Town makes sense. All right. So, Lindsay, you could probably yes. touch this and feel that this is getting warm now. Oh, it is. It's quite warm, actually. Yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm still gonna just let it roll for a second here before I add my squash. If this um, is aioli, it'd be busted. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's the nice thing is that. Um, Chickpeas take in fat really well, um, so the, uh, it's it's one of those weird things. It that, like, never occurred to me to do this this long. This is amazing. I mean, I think that that yeah, people just don't go far enough in blending, and I say, don't don't be shy. I, I worked at a restaurant where we would actually start it off in the Vitamix, oh, and okay. then then <laughs> switch it from the Vitamix to the Roboku. And then back in the vitamins. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then one of my friends who uh, who worked at the sister restaurant said, Are you wearing foil hats when you're doing this? Like, mm. are you, are you, how like, much like, are you crazy? Your, how much of your life is just It's scraping. a lot of scraping, but uh, just getting that <laughs> consistency really well. Um, I want to just take a second and talk a little bit about when we're serving hummus. Um, hummus is meant to be eaten like almost warm to room temperature. Uh, it's just that's really when you're going to get the most flavor out of it. Uh, eating it right cold out of the fridge is, is you know, if you're in a pinch is something. But it's like you, if you really want the experience of, you, you really want to try to have, try to have it as close to room temperature as you can. Uh, in Israel, uh, they basically, and actually, in again, I keep talking about Mike Salamanov because he's like one of my heroes. But anyways, they will make hummus just for the day, you know, and then. You know, whatever they, you know, they try to sell out, obviously, and then they start fresh the next day. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's how, you know, this is almost like a, again, a living, breathing entity of its own. I love hummus. I love talking about hummus. <laughs> if you can't tell already. Um, other things about hummus. That, anybody have any other questions as I'm doing this crazy blending thing? So the, yes. The bottom line here is you have to have this kind of instrument to make it. It really, really does help. The question is about yes. having a yes. food it's, processor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have to be a Roboku because this yes. is a restaurant <laughs> uh, grade or commercial grade. Uh, but yeah, a Cuisinart. Um, or, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. The my Cuisinart, my yeah, Cuisinart yeah, actually holds up pretty well. Um, uh, and you can do it in fits and starts too. Oh. Like, yeah. Like if you need, if it needs to, a second to cool down or whatever, that's fine. So, all right. I think we're we're gonna be at a good point here. Um, and as you can see, uh, well, hopefully most of you can see, it's looking really nice and smooth. Um, I'm not seeing any big hunks of garlic or anything like that that are floating around there. And you really are kind of. You can see how that tahini is really just. Um, folded in there really nice. Um, it looks, looks like batter. It, like, it kind of does. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so now I'm going to add the roasted squash, which I think we said was about two cups, which is most of this. Um, it's, it was amazing to me. So I actually did some math online to try to figure out like how much of a raw squash is that. Um, and squash apparently loses about half its volume when you roast it, which I didn't realize. Oh, yeah. um, but I had like a big old four pound squash and I roasted it and got not nearly as much as I would have yeah. thought I would have gotten out of it. Um, the cool thing about the butternut squash in this that I was thinking about is there's an auto lengthy recipe, I think it's in Simple, mm -hmm. that is just roasted winter squash with tahini sauce. Yeah. And it's a lot of the same ingredients that if yeah. you're making this, you've already got them on hand, the lemon juice, the tahini. Yeah, yeah. And it's beautiful. Nice. I've made it a bunch. It's really good. Yeah, it's 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 very versatile. So I'm just, I'm just adding that butternut squash in just for uh, that hint of sweetness. sweet potato if you would prefer um, really any sort of roasted squash that you like. Now it's going to kind of turn a nice orange color, which is kind of fun. Um, and oh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of pumpkin. Yeah, a little pumpkin. You could use pumpkin, honestly, <laughs> if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's starting to make it nice and orange. Carrots, you could do that um, for oh, sure. Roasted carrots. Uh, you use like canned pumpkin or okay. fresh roasted? You could definitely use canned pumpkin. I would just say make sure you you season it pretty well. Um, 
So that's pretty much there. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it a taste and see where I am at on my salt here. Uh, always, you know, adjust seasoning as necessary. If you feel like it's not enough, add a little more. I'm gonna add more. <laughs> There's a restaurant in the, it's like a, a food re like stall style restaurant in the Chelsea Market that basically just does hummus. Yes, yeah, Dizengoff. Yeah, it's, it's a, real good. It really is. And I was just, I was blown away by this idea of hummus as like your whole meal, <laughs> you know? It's like, 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 can we normalize the normalize hummus shop? Normalize hummus as a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, can we normalize this? So it was great. Yeah. That is, about there, which is nice, and it's still warm, so I'm just gonna kinda let it hang here for a second while we work on our crumble situation, which is super easy. Um, but yes, if you have any more questions. I do, in yes. the spirit of uh, Viroqua, and yes. the dressless yes, ingredients, yes, yes. Um, do you ever make this with like sunflower oil or something like that? Because I know- That's a nice question. Yeah. Um, I have not, I, I have not made this particular recipe with sunflower oil, but there is no reason why you couldn't. Um, I would just say, you know, go, it's strong. So it a little is bit strong. will go. It's a different a flavor, little bit will yeah. go a long way for sure. You could definitely confit your mushrooms in the sunflower oh. oil. That would be really lovely. Um, and uh, I've, I mean, I've definitely used, uh, not sunflower oil, but I've used local sunchokes to puree into hummus as well. Uh, Roasted sunchokes, they're kind of a pain to peel, but they are. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's but, why um, I don't eat them very often. Yes, but that's another thing that you could confit too. Um, I don't, when I'm roasting sunchokes, I don't peel them. I just slice them uh, uh, and then roast them. And it's it's still very, very lovely. And I don't, you know, the peel is, is flavorful and full of good vitamins I feel like and things. I would be tempted to put beets, like roasted beets. Yeah. And it would make it different, but yeah. like, I've, I'm obsessed with beets. Yes, And they have this absolutely. kind of a similar sweetness to them. Absolutely, you could definitely do beets. That would be lovely. Or you could do roasted beets on top as a little topping. Be That's pretty. The, the, the combinations are endless. <laughs> yeah. Um, so while those mushrooms are cooking, we'll just do the crumble here, which is super easy. Um, and then hopefully the mushrooms will be done in a bit. Speaking of the toppings, yes. Um, so when, I think when when MJ was pairing this beautiful orange wine that we have from yes. Leopold's, um, she was looking at the recipe that I think you had on the menu at Driftless. Okay. Because there was something pickled in the topping at that point, I think. Or uh, oh, it do you could remember have been. If there yeah, was? we might have had a pickled red onion or Ooh, pickled. Okay. Ooh, there was pickle. I'm trying to pickle fennel. I can't remember, but yeah, we normally do have a, an assortment of pickled vegetables so like something crunchy something herby yep um, something very earthy right yep. the mushrooms yep yep um, yeah like that that like pickled acidity like yeah. I was thinking about that as being just another component oh, of what might yeah. be on top absolutely um, pickled red onions are a great and easy thing to make at home um, even like pepperoncinis would be nice on oh, there if you liked a little yeah. spice would be great um, Again, if you, uh, and most Middle Eastern grocery stores will have uh, Turkish pickled peppers, these tiny little peppers that are that pack a punch, but they're really, really lovely <laughs> and delicious. You could put jardinera on there. You could do, you can do whatever you like. You I know? just got some pepperies to make pimento cheese. Yes. Because I wanted to make pimento cheese. <laughs> um, and, and I have some of those and I was like, what am I gonna do with the rest of these? I can't just keep making pimento cheese. I mean, I could, but, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not gonna. So I was like, what am I gonna do with the rest of these? Something like this would be yeah, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. As again, this is really just a starting point and you can really use your imagination and what you like uh, to eat. and. So these are some of the things that I like to eat. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna add some pepitas because it is seasonal and lovely. So these are uh, toasted, dry, or sorry, uh, toasted and salted pepitas. So they, you really don't need to add a lot more salt to this because of that. So just be careful on that one. When I'm warming them up, if I'm toasting them on the stove, I love how they pop. Oh yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> I, just, I just do them in a dry skillet and yeah. they, they get nice and toasty and lovely. Mm. Um, and then I'm gonna add some walnuts. These are just um, <clears throat> walnut pieces, a uh, little bit of toast on there or not, depending on I always burn nuts at home, so and do I. so yeah. <laughs> they go so quick. Like, yes, There's like exactly. one second, and you're like, 
Yes. And they're expensive. Nuts are expensive. Yes, yeah. they are. They are. So again, and you don't even need to use the walnuts if you don't if you don't want to use nuts. That's fine. Or you have an allergy. Um, sesame seeds, a hugely versatile. I use sesame seeds all the time, uh, especially to make crumbly things that go on top. It's oftentimes part of a texture aspect of one of my dishes at the restaurant. We'll have sesame in there somehow. Toasted or not? These are toasted, yes. Um, they are inexpensive at the Asian markets if you find them there. Yeah, I, absolutely. I get mine there now. Yes. Um, and then I'm going to do some uh, demerara sugar, sugar in the raw. Is It's just like that natural cane sugar. Um, it's going to be like nice and crunchy, and you're going to get the nice little sweet crunch in there. Um, so I'm going to add that in there. And then um, I think it's on the recipe as an additional topping, but I'm just gonna add it into this too. These are fried crispy onions, so who doesn't love these at Thanksgiving? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so these are, um, you can get these like the French's, you know, that you would get for your green bean casserole, or these are like fancy Swedish ones that I got at the co-op. Um, they're called like Lars crispy onions or something. Um, yeah, you put Lars, I think, in the recipe, and Chris, my editor, was like, I don't know this brand, what is this? <laughs> and I, and I, I think I passed on to you, you're like, just the fancy French's. Yes, fancy, yeah, exactly, exactly. I am just looking for another little spoon there, Lauren. Would you mind grabbing me? Something to mix this with, so I'm, I would normally just use my hands, but I feel like I should probably. <laughs> and I, thank you, I'm just gonna mix this around. Um, and then I'm gonna add, so my version of black pepper, um, Maris chili or Aleppo chili, which has become uh, a lot more popular. Um, a lot of this is not coming from Aleppo anymore, obviously, because of the conflict in Syria. So um, it's more, you probably can find it more as Maris chili. Um, and it's nice because it gives that. Uh, it gives that amount of spice that black pepper would do, but it has a little bit more depth and it's not um, as aggressive, I think. Yes, yeah. I have been using it in place of black pepper a yes, lot. I feel yes. like Chris Kimball is always yelling about like, s s like separating salt and pepper. Like so many recipes will just say salt and pepper, salt and pepper, salt and pepper. Yeah. And he's always yelling about like, why do we do this? <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, fine. And so I've started, I've started doing the <laughs> pepper thing, or Mara's pepper. Yeah. And it's been really, like it's really good with like chicken, if you're yeah. doing like, a roasted chicken. Doing the Aleppo instead, it's lovely. It's really nice, and it goes really well if you're using other like zatar on there or something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's it's nice. It gives you kind of like a, a lingering. It plays heat. well with others. Yes, absolutely. I agree, <laughs> and um, especially with roasted chicken with butter too, like uh, an Aleppo garlic butter. Ooh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, so I mixed all this together, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna add just a teeny teeny tiny little bit of olive oil so that all kind of sticks together. I don't know if that's in the recipe, and I apologize. <laughs> it's just instinctual. Ooh, I will add it. I'm going to remember this. Yeah. Everybody. Oh. Remember. <laughs> yeah. Remember so yeah, it. just a little bit. Just to help everything stick together is honestly. That, we get we those. put so much work into these recipes that I'm just sort of like, I'm going to publish them sometime. Like, yeah, you should, for yeah, sure. Right? So this is our crumble here. And then the other things I have to put on top are uh, pomegranate seeds, which I have conveniently uh, gotten shucked already because um, I figured that you know you probably didn't want to watch me trying to murder <laughs> <shuck>. it. <Yeah. laughs> um, but there are a couple of different ways that you can uh, clean pomegranates. The easiest way is to um, quarter them actually and then over like a, a bowl filled with water to kind of crumble them. Uh, otherwise the fun way which I t and I recommend is to cut I wish I had a whole one to show but to cut like you would um, like a grapefruit the same like along that uh, in half and then take a, a wooden spoon over a bowl full of water and just whack the seeds out of there and it's like yeah it's just gets I do a combination <laughs> it's of those fun. things it's I, eat, fun. I eat pomegranates for as long as I possibly can yes. I love them so much yes um, and I honestly like these two things I would totally put on uh, yogurt oh absolutely right yeah. in the morning it yeah. would be beautiful um, maybe not onions but you know the rest the rest of it yeah yeah but yeah the pomegranate like putting it over like I'll start to like bend it on the Mm -hmm. like the opposite way and they just sort of start to pop out. Yeah, it's really yeah. fun. It's it's not as hard as it looks. I mean, I think it's kind of an intimidating it fruit um, and it's messy. So, uh, but it is way less expensive to buy them and clean them than it is to buy them already shucked. Like it's it's like crazy less expensive. So I would encourage you to get that aggression out uh, with that wooden spoon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then um, 
The other topping we have too is uh, the holy trinity of herbs for me, which is uh, what I learned uh, at the restaurants that I worked at in Boston um, with so many wonderful women. Uh, we call it PMD parsley mint dill and it will change your life <laughs> um, it, this is a just really lovely combination of herbs um, you can use it in a salad again this is just a, a topping that I would use on uh, the hummus or anything like that um, fatouche salad is, a, is something that I use this with a lot uh, in combination with sumac and it's just uh, really really lovely so the holy trinity parsley mint dill there it is um, are there farms near you in Barocco that do herbs? Yes, ah. yes, amazingly, yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, not year round, oh, sure. but okay. you know, that is changing. I feel like the, the seasons are getting longer, the weather's getting weirder, um, and then greenhouses are also, you know, uh, trying new things and, yes. yeah. you know, I'll, I'll basically, it would, dependent on what customers are looking for. And so hopefully, you know, I, I mean, right now I can get herbs and greens because uh, at the restaurant we still we serve a dinner salad with our entrees, so uh, we always are trying to have local greens for most of the year. Um, right now, I can get them into Christmas, which okay. which is great. So we, good, we yeah. only have like two months where we're kind of in a little bit of a limbo. But then, like in March, we actually have a, a Amish farmer who heats his greenhouse with um, sawdust in the winter time, wow. which is crazy. So he will have salad greens for us in March and it's like oh my God. so That's it's wild. yeah it's, it's pretty wild yeah. um, all right any other questions before I check on these mushrooms which I'm hoping are done <laughs> I was wondering about this confit method yes, um, are yeah. there are there other things that you could do like your I mean obviously you talked about duck you, like I yeah. think of confit I often think of like duck confit yeah. or meat products uh, yeah. you know I honestly confit more vegetables than I do meat all right products. Uh, I love to confit potatoes, actually. So Whole yeah. Cool or hot? Uh, cut, oh, so yeah. what I so what I normally do is um, cut them into wedges. So Yukon Gold potatoes are, I think, the best for this particular method. Um, and uh, I just put put them in olive oil with a little lemon juice and garlic, whole garlic again. Um, and then whatever kind of seasoning you like, uh, like oregano, paprika. Um, I like to sneak a little bit of actually uh, what, what we found at the restaurant that we really liked a little bit of fenugreek leaf in there too to give it kind of this sweetness. It's like caramel, like caramel yeah, yeah, like yeah. And then so you just kind of you you cook it in the oven. It takes about 45 minutes. They come out. They're super soft and lovely. Um, you can eat them just like that, or if you want to go a step further, you can fry them again so they get super super crispy or bake them, yeah, however you air fry. I don't know, I've actually never, <laughs> I've never air fried anything, but I think it's the same thing as a convection oven. I'm not sure. Um, it looks like the same thing. Yeah. I so, don't have one either, but I, yeah. um, It is? Okay. okay. Yeah, it's just high, high convection. Hi, okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I love doing that with potatoes because I really love like lemony Greek style potatoes and mm. I feel like that that is the kind of, the best way to sort of mimic that that I've found at least. Uh, sunchokes I talked about too. You could definitely do that with sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes or the other name they go by. Slicing those with the peel on. Same, similar. Um, so those are the ones that I, I do most often. Mushrooms are relatively like a new thing that I've started doing. Um, and now I'm just sort of like, what else can we do? What else can we throw in there? More be. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I would say it's definitely a more expensive method to cook you know with because like yeah you know olive oil is um, pretty expensive but also like sometimes what I do is I'll use canola oil for most of the recipe or vegetable oil or sunflowers uh. Uh, you know um, and then add olive oil in as well so that's like not just it's not the primary oil that I'm using also olive oil can get again get really bitter if that's the only oil you're using so I would definitely do a combination of the two but you can save the oil a couple of times too right to, to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Grape seed oil, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So Thanksgiving is next week. Are you the one cooking? You know, I haven't really thought about it yet. 
<laughs> um, I usually have to, I usually, um, so it's a busy time for us at the restaurant because, you know, before Thanksgiving, people want to go out to eat, and after Thanksgiving, people want to go out to eat. So, oh, true, yeah. Uh, you know, so I'm usually uh, in that frame of mind. But uh, normally, it's, I don't know, I'd say it's pretty democratic in my house. Um, we will, my husband will usually get up to put the turkey in the smoker. Oh, good, okay. Which is, which is great. Um, and then my in-laws are coming, and they usually bring something. Uh, so I will do, I, I will do less cooking than I normally do this year, I think, because I have some helpers, I have some family coming in that I haven't seen in a while. So um, I feel like I, I'm going to be able to watch the Macy's Day Parade, which is like the only thing I, I really love so to much. do. I have to every year. <laughs> I know, I have right? to. Yeah. Um, but I do, Thanksgiving is one of the holidays where I actually do try to bake sometimes. Oh, I was going to say, do you, what, who does dessert? Yeah. Um, so uh, pie, probably my daughter really wants to make pie this year. She wants to make apple pie and pumpkin pie. I don't think she's going to eat any of those How things. She's almost five. She'll be five okay. in <laughs> two weeks. So uh, I think she just likes the idea of like, making the pie and eating sugar, mostly. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, what I really like to make are uh, these tahini brioche rolls that I, there's a recipe from uh, the pastry, a pastry chef that I worked at at Oleana for a while, and they are so good, but they're labor intensive, and it's really the only time of year that I will try to do that, so. Nice. Because I like to do the whole, like, roll in the mashed potatoes, and. You know, like just you know, completely guilt-free, just like go for it. Yes. So, and again, tahini everywhere. <laughs> I think so. we have a Jane. I think has a question. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the, my kids kind of like the that traditional bean casserole. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like, well, you know, let's start our own new tradition. Yeah. I don't really feel like it's that healthy. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, I don't really enjoy it, but I was wondering, are you from the Boston area, and what? Oh, okay. Um, so I'm actually from Illinois. Originally, I was uh, uh, raised in Evanston, Illinois, which is the first suburb north of Chicago. Um, and then I did my undergrad at UW. Uh, and then after I graduated from UW, we decided I want to be a chef. <laughs> <laughs> and did my uh, associate's degree at Madison College. And then my husband actually got a job in Boston. This was, I think, 2011. And so we moved out there for uh, his work. And then we're there for about eight, nine years. And you know, we were ready to come back to the Midwest. So. And what uh, did you do your undergrad in? Um, Anything related to food? No, actually. <laughs> Ask uh, me about what you did her undergrad in. Uh, English literature and American Indian studies minor. Hmm. So, All right. Uh, so <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I love an English lit major. Right. Yeah, you know? I mean, someday I maybe I'll you know write write that cookbook someday. So right. Yeah, it'll come in mind. We so. should talk about that. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't But yeah, so that's what. And so uh, we basically wanted to come back to the Midwest, and uh, my daughter was less than a year at the time, and we just really wanted a place for her to be able to roll around in the grass and just you know have lots of wide open space and. So my husband was able to work remotely, and then I was planning on not cooking for a while, <laughs> and then you know just things happened, and I found my way to the Driftless Cafe, and here I am now. So yeah, wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, we have to pick a best question winner, and you guys, this month's questions. Oh they're not that good, let's just be honest. Oh no. <laughs> I feel like our choices are why is kosher salt better? <laughs> are we talking two 15 hands cans chick chickpeas? That's a good one, right? It was Claire, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding everyone at home. I'm, we're thankful for your questions. Sean had a pretty good question, yeah. but. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't count, he's He family. doesn't count, he's not in the area. We need someone that can swing by and pick up this wine. I want to know what people are making for Thanksgiving next week. I, I really oh, do. Like, what, okay, like, we're what changing it up. Yeah, we're going to change it up. They have seven I, like, minutes. Ta tell us what you're cooking for Thanksgiving at home. The best answer will take home the bottle of Leopold oh, wine. Nice. Right. Ready, go. <laughs> Ready, go. <laughs> They're yeah. not flooding in yet. I, I don't get to cook next week because my sister-in-law is an amazing cook and we're going up there. And so... Where is that again? Uh, outside of Wausau in Hatley, Wisconsin. Wausau, hmm. that area is pretty. Yes, it's a very pretty area, so it'll be great. All right, we're going to see how these mushrooms oh, look. Oh, yeah, they're actually looking really nice. 
Ooh, yeah, so they are so much smaller. Mushrooms yes, do that thing yes. where they like shrink, 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 shrink. Yes, 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 yes. So I'll just kind of uh, yeah. put yeah, this over here so we can see. Um, one right. thing that you could Same. definitely add, because you probably have it around for Thanksgiving, is you could put like a sprig of thyme in there too Ooh, while you're yeah. confiting it or sage or anything like that. But it smells really nice. I get that garlic. Um, and that oil again is going to be really nice as to use for something else, maybe for your appetizer set up for the holiday or something like that. So I'm going to take these out of the uh, oil with a like a slatted spoon. Oh right, because you said you can reserve the oil. Yeah, for yeah, else. yeah, for sure. Would you um, cook with it, or would you? I would just use it as like a dipping okay, oil, sure. or yeah. um, if you wanted to make more of these mushrooms, you can save it for that purpose, or. Um, and like the garlic cloves are hopefully soft enough that they can just go right in there. If you don't like garlic. That's like another Chris Kimball thing. He doesn't like minced garlic. He wants it like bit, like smashed and big because he says the flavor is a little bit more, I don't know, yeah. balanced? I'm not sure. I'm like, but, I like a lot of garlic. Yeah, I think, I think kind of the thinking behind that, as far from if I can remember, is that the more you chop it, kind of like the more volatile compounds come out. That makes sense. Yes, yeah. I think I've heard that too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, this kind of allows you to have more of a mellow garlic flavor. Yes. But I mean, I'm with you. I really love like a punchy, garlic, yeah. punchy, punchy garlic situation. So. Um, yeah. Okay, I think I think Doris is gonna take home the bottle of wine with this one. You ready? I'm yes, ready. Yeah. Doris. Okay. okay. What they're making butternut squash hummus with mushroom confit <laughs> and pepino hey, right. <laughs> for brunch the next day. Well, that doesn't there you count, go. Doris. <laughs> I right. think that was good. Oh, okay. we have Audrey just commented. Thanksgiving will include a turkey breast, apple dressing, venison roast, Ooh. fresh and we're lucky, and pies. Ooh. Ooh. Venison rose. That's, that's Doris is doing content. it the next day for brunch. So that doesn't count. <laughs> Come on, Doris. <laughs> Just Should we say Audrey? I mean, that's a good. That sounds like delicious, that Audrey. Where good. do you live? Message me your address. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming over. I'm just gonna over. buzz that for just a second because as it cools, that chick. That's actually another good thing. As this cools, like the chickpeas will start to seize up a little bit and you oh. might get like a little bit of a skin on the top of that which is it's there's nothing wrong with it you just might want to put like a piece of wax paper or just on top of it if you're going to set it aside because that helps kind of with that so um, I'm just going to do a little demo plate if that works yes. Um, yes. make sure I have a clean spoon here I'm just going to rinse this off real All right, quick. I chose Audrey as the winner congrats Audrey you can Yay, swing by Audrey. Audrey. Book Bar Cafe and pick this up one your is bottle of wine so good. it's so good I Yum. love orange wine so much Orange wine. It's skin contact wine. Hummus is like this very traditional thing, and skin contact wine is also super traditional too, right? So All right. I'm just it. gonna plate it right from here, which is not usually what I do, but uh, <laughs> uh, just this is just gonna be like a little sample for everybody who's watching. Um, this hummus is still warm, so it's like got this nice. It's so creamy. It's very mm -hmm. creamy yeah. and lovely. Um, and so then I'm gonna take my mushrooms here and put those kind of in the middle. And again, this can be on like a bigger plate if you want to do this as like an entree portion for somebody or um, as like an appetizer, just like putting it on a larger plate is totally fine. Um, and then I always like to do a little bit of Aleppo on the side here too. The color is really pretty. Yeah, really, really beautiful. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our crumble here on top and then this would be like if you did want to put some pickles on here too you could do that um so you're gonna everything's kind of like peeking out at each other and then i'm gonna do my little herbs so get that nice fresh this just really brings that nice it's so colorful yeah I feel like this is the thing I think about all winter is just where can I get color? Where can I get color? Yeah. I just need not brown. All right. And that is, there you are. And again, like you can eat this with a spoon <laughs> or with clap. bread. I don't want to do too early. Go ahead. There you go. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah, very Gorgeous. festive. Thank you so much, and that's that's that. So we'll, I'm gonna there. heat up some. Uh, is there anybody that has a gluten allergy here? So, it, it, this never gets plated on a large plate in the middle of the table. You could if you wanted to. A you absolutely could. Table, yeah. If you if you had like a, a rectangular plate, 
you could just take that yeah. all of that hummus and just all just it's just changing it. the direction instead of in a circle you're just going to take a line in the middle and then put all of your toppings on that and then yeah, either or would be totally fine. So we're gonna eat this with a spoon, or you pizza? can eat it with a spoon. No, uh, but I do your hand. I do have. <laughs> uh, I do have. I did yeah, bring some pita bread with me, so we we will enjoy it with some pita. And uh, you, but you can most definitely eat it like you would eat a, a meal with a spoon. Or well. any kind of like a crunchy seasoning. Yeah, veggies. any. Yeah, yeah, I love like um, again, beauty heart radishes that are really lovely, or like beets if you slice them nice and thin raw, they're really lovely. Um, carrots, um, I'm trying to think of what else is like more of a Thanksgiving. I love celery, anything yeah. celery, celeriac, celery, yeah, yeah, yeah I yep, love yep. it, I love it, and kohlrabi um, too. Green beans. Oh yeah, green beans would be beans really good. There. I love uh, those beautiful like haikuri turnips, if you oh, can yeah. still find those, uh, those are really lovely and sweet, so yeah, I can just do like a really colorful combination of vegetables so well for Thanksgiving or for brunch I feel like that would be delicious yeah absolutely, absolutely. yes <laughs> well thank you so yeah much. of course thanks for having me this was fun yes thank yeah. you Yay. thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have wonderful comments before we sign off Audrey said looks beautiful thank you so much for expanding our options chef they also said that they're cooking in mezo and all are welcome heck yes <laughs> uh, they said it's what thanksgiving is all about sharing the blessings of the season oh we very nice yes more. absolutely um, before we sign off tonight, I do want to mention that next month in December is going to be a members only cooking with the cap time. So not only members only in person, but you viewing at home, you have to be <laughs> members to get access to the Zoom live stream. I put the link in the chat. You can give any amount, $1.5. $125, any amount you want, um, <laughs> to support the Cap Times, to support this video series, and then you'll get access to attend in December. And our chef in December, should we say? Yes, Giovanni Novella from Bar Coralini in Madison. Ooh. He's he sounds like he's gonna be making a stuffed fresh pasta. So it's gonna be pretty amazing. Um, and we're really looking forward to having him. So you guys don't want to miss that. Yes. Become a Cap Times member. Again, you can give any amount. You are supporting that end of your membership drive where we are trying to raise $35,000 for our newsroom and keep on track with our goals. We love goals. <laughs> and I just want to thank our sponsors one last time. Our official kitchen sponsor where we host this event every month is at Pessinix. Come on in and shop like a chef here because it's open to the public. And Leopold's Books Bar Cafe, our official wine pairing sponsor. So stop in there, grab a glass of wine or a latte. Um, and that's all we have, you guys. So thank you so much for thank tuning you. in. And have a great evening. Uh, go pack go. 14 minutes, <laughs> the game starts. So get your cheese curds and your hummus ready. Time for the Packers. Right, Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye.